ان الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والارض في سته ايام ثم استوى على العرش يدبر الامر ما من شفيع الا من بعد اذنه ذلكم الله ربكم فاعبدوه افلا تذكرون وهو القاهر فوق عباده ويسبح الرعد بحمده والملائكة من خيفته فتبارك الله أحسن الخالقين هو الحي لا إله إلا هو فادعوه مخلصين له الدين الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد في الأولى والآخرة وله الحكم وإليه ترجعون ونصلي ونسلم على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم سيد الاولين والاخرين وخاتم النبيين والمرسلين ورحمه للعالمين بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه فالذين امنوا به وعزروه ونصروه واتبعوا النور الذي انزل معه اولئك هم المفلحون ومن يعص الله ورسوله ويتعدى حدوده يدخله نارا وكان ذلك على الله يسيرا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وامنوا برسوله يؤتكم كفلين من رحمته ويجعل لكم نورا تمشون به ويغفر لكم والله غفور رحيم ثم اما بعد The 21st century has created freedoms for all of us in many things. The freedom to live your life the way you want to. The freedom to believe in anything or not to. The freedom to worship or not to. The freedom to walk around naked or clothed. Freedoms. And sometimes In pursuit of freedom, human beings have rebelled against the most oppressive regimes successfully and sometimes unsuccessfully. The human spirit longs to be free, it seems. But I have a question, brothers and sisters. Did Allah intend for us to be free, like free-range chickens? Just crazy. Did Allah intend for us to live our lives just the way we want? to follow every desire that we have then if our western liberal societies preach freedom for everyone in anything they want to do freely then why is it that it, there is only freedom guaranteed for those that do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why is it so that you cannot freely worship Allah the time Allah wants to be worshiped without sometimes a manager says i need you here <clears throat> why is it that you are not free as a muslim especially our sisters may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve them to dress the way allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded them to dress without someone else dictating to them that that dress is a sign of oppression why is it that muslim women are being banned in france and the uk and other such most liberal of all places why is that what happened to freedom for all what happened to equality all of those are abstracts in textbooks people will never be pleased with you unless you follow their way allah already made that statement in quran walan tadda anka al-yahud wal nasara hatta tattabi'a millatahum people will not be pleased with you until you accept their way in fact they say in germany they say in the netherlands politicians and lawmakers 
Unless you follow our way, you're not welcome here. Our freedom is not for you unless you give up your religion, you give up everything and adopt our way. So that is the price we pay for this illusion of freedom. And today I want to talk about the freedom of our sisters. On the 1st of February, they have now this new recognition of World Hijab Day. A day which over 40, uh, 140 countries of the world recognize simply by non-Muslims showing solidarity with Muslims by non-Muslim women wearing the hijab. Now this day was organized starting in 2013 by a Muslim and she was she came to America at the age of about 11. So while growing up in America and 9-11 happened, she faced a lot of bullying, first of all in elementary school, and when 9-11 happened, she faced a lot of attacks from even strangers. So she decided to start this cause of bringing awareness that if you wear what I wore and you, re and you receive the same harsh treatment from people, imagine a non-Muslim looking like a Muslim. Do you remember when a professor, an adjunct professor in one of the you know, Christian universities, she decided to wear hijab a couple of years ago. To show the same solidarity, they fired her from the job. And they asked her why. She goes, I want to show this solidarity with the Muslims. They said that her wearing hijab contradicted her position in a, you know, in a Christian university. <laughs> As if the Bible does not command uh, women to wear hijab. I can give you the Old Testament, the book of Genesis chapter 24, tells us that women wear hijab. In the book of Isaiah, it tells us women wear hijab. Now somebody will say a Christian, that's the Old Testament. That's always the argument they have. That's the Old Testament. In the New Testament, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 2 through 13, especially verse uh, 13, it says, and these are the words of the, <laughs> the revered person Paul, that a woman must wear hijab, that it's unseemly for her to be seen worshiping without even hijab. And then he challenged me, if you doubt that this is not the teaching of the church, then maybe you are not part of the church. Women used to wear hijab as part of the church. Have you seen nuns? Have you seen any picture of Maryam alayhi salam, which they paint, without her having hijab on? Then why is it that the Muslim woman is the one that is subjected to attacks, bullying, because they wear the hijab. Well, sometimes, brothers and sisters, we have a conundrum. As much as women, non-Muslim, are willing to put on the hijab, of all stripes, even promoted by certain leaders, like the Prime Minister of UK. Yet, in some Muslim countries, women are protesting the hijab, taking it off, and waving it like flags, that they are protesting the law of it because some countries make it mandatory. So how come Muslims are protesting the wearing it, <laughs> but non-Muslims are wearing it to show solidarity? The world has turned upside down. But let me answer the question, and let me pose at least the question, and let us propose answers. Why do Muslimat wear hijab? The first thing I want to highlight, dear brothers and sisters, is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes a Muslim comes to me and says, Brother, I find nowhere in the Quran it says we should wear hijab. I wonder which Quran the person is reading. And I know why they're asking. Because they're looking for the term hijab. So let's address the term hijab. In the book of Allah, the word hijab is never used in the context of clothing. Abada, in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So where, where did we come up with the word hijab to refer to clothing? <coughs> well, let's use the words Allah used them. Because the word hijab linguistically means a screen, a cover, something that could obscure, something that could shield. Hijab and mastura. Allah has used the term hijab, but never for clothes. But when Allah talked about dressing, He used a more specific term. 
that represents clothing. So sometimes there is intellectual dishonesty in some Muslims to pretend that Allah never mentioned in hijab in Quran. Their argument is, if it's not in Quran, it means I don't have to follow it. That's the argument. And the problem is many Muslims are distant from the Quran. So what's the reference for hijab in the book of Allah as a commandment? In Surah No, Surah number 24, Start with ayah 30. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Qul lil mu'minina yawuddu min absarihim wa yahfadhu furujahum thalika azka lahum inna allaha khabirun bima yasna'u. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started revealing laws that govern the following. Intergender interactions. Interaction between Men and women, the male and the female, social interactions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is revealing how we should not only present ourselves, but how we should comport ourselves. To just reveal a law about clothing without the context of it would make no sense. This is one of the beauty of Quran. Each injunction or principle has a context. Conversely, if you look at a Torah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَتَبْنَا لَهُ فِي الْأَلْوَاحِ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مَوْعِظَةً وَتَفْصِيلًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ Bani Israel received a bunch of laws all at once, without a context for the law. Do's and don'ts, many of them. Well, Quran, something happened, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the law. Subhanallah. So Allah says, قُلْ The first part of the ayah is the word قُلْ which is, which is a word that is the imperative, a command to someone. Allah says, Qul, and it was a singular command. So therefore, Allah is telling who? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to give us that this is what Allah wants. In the beginning of the surah, Allah said, Suratun anzalnaha wa faradnaha wa anzalna fiha ayatin bayinat. Allah says, this surah, this surah that you have here, we are sending it and we are making it obligatory. And we're revealing in it ayatin bayinat. Clear ayat. And we know that they had the ayat of zina in the beginning. And then to make riba and an namima, as you know the story of Aisha radiallahu anha. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is coming to how you present and how you comport yourselves. So Allah started with men first, before the women. So Allah told the Prophet وسلم, say to the believing men that they should lower part of their gaze. Subhanallah, so, look at the language of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah didn't say, absarahum. That means you would have to walk down with your head down all the time. If you just have to lower your gaze and walk, you run into poles. Right now, people run into poles just by texting. Imagine if you say, I'm following the command of Allah, my head is down, I run into things. Allah knows that you will see some certain things that are appropriate and some things are inappropriate. When you see something inappropriate, lower your gaze. Or at the same time, you should not look at certain things that although they may appear appropriate, they may be harmful to you. SubhanAllah. And they should protect their private parts. Allah says, This is the road to Tazkiyah, to have a clean heart and a clean mind. Tazkiyah, Allah says. People think that these laws are restrictions. They're just to oppress people. Allah says, Because what you see, what you hear, or sometimes what you touch, will corrupt your heart and will corrupt your soul. And the ayah gives us <coughs> indications of that. Lower from your gaze some portions of it and protect yourself. That it's an active duty for every man to be upright, to be moral, to not stare at women. When you encounter a woman, Allah knows you have the first look. You get a surprise. After the first look, lower your gaze. 
In the West, if you don't look at a woman, stare at her eye to eye and shake her hand and be able to look at her face to face, you have disrespected her. It's weird. And yet, if you meet a Japanese businessman, you lower your gaze, you don't ever shake his hand. Why is that? If a Japanese wealthy businessman comes to America, no woman shakes his hand. No woman stares him in the face. You give him the respect the Japanese want for respect. But for the Muslim, you're backward. But Allah dealt with the men first. Imagine, sisters, what is the most commonly reported scandal now for the past year? The Me Too movement is about what? Women that have been sexually assaulted, abused, misconduct, you name it. Everything sexual. From everyone, from the highest office in the land to the lowest, it doesn't matter. At every level, some woman has been assaulted or abused or something of the sort. <clears throat> Inappropriate behavior directed towards them. By whom? Men. Doesn't it make sense that Allah start with the men first? Imagine if the men of society today live by this ayah. Will we have a, a Me Too movement? Women will be safe from the hands of men, right? But society doesn't want to do that. Likewise, then Allah came to the women, sisters, why, you and, uh, why our women wear hijab? Allah says, وَكُلِّ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغْضُدْنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنْ وَيَحْفَظْنَ فُرُوجَهُنْ Allah says, and say to the believing women, they should, they should also lower their gazes. Women should not stare at men. There's desires both ways. And they should protect themselves as well. And then Allah added additional commands for the women. And they should not expose their adornments except what is apparent. And the ulama have talked about many categories of adornment. It means their jewelry. And sometimes their clothing is part of their adornment. And women have all sorts of jewelries. jewelries. Earrings, nose rings, necklaces, bangles, waist chains, anklets. All of these are things that women wear of all cultures. Allah says not to expose what's on their bodies in jewelry and also part of their clothing is zina. And I'll tell you why. Because the ayah gives us a context. Just follow. Lower your gaze. Guard your chastity. Do not expose your beautification to people. Except what is apparent. Some parts of your clothing or your jewelry is exposed. You cannot actually conceal it. For example, a woman wore a ring, it's exposed in her hand. Let's just give you an example. If she wears an anklet, it could be exposed, and Allah will, will reveal what we should not do. Then there is a phrase in the ayah. Sisters, this ayah is what talks about wearing hijab, and Allah never used the word hijab. He said, commandment number four, bihumurihinna ala juyubihin. The khimar is the term Allah used to refer to this cover, not hijab. Hijab is a generic term. It's non-specific. Some Muslim says, oh, the Quran just says we should be modest. Can anybody give me the ayah that says it's modesty that you should be? The, the ayah is so clear. Allah says they should take these, these garments, this clothing of theirs, this cloth, and not only cover themselves with it, to the extent of the covering, where is the jabe of the body? Which portion of the body is al jabe? Is it the head? Is it the chest? It goes further down. Allah wanted women to not only cover their heads, but to cover down to cover the bosom, why would Allah want women to cover their bosoms and to go so far down to their sides? Because before this command, in Jahiliyyah, women used to walk around with cleavage. You know, there's a misconception. You know what some people say? Well, in Arabia, women used to cover anyway. That's nonsense. The ayah says women did not used to cover. That's why Allah is revealing it now. Imagine women used to expose their chest. They used to expose their ankles. They used to expose parts of their bodies. 
That's how they used to dress before. Islam established a new standard for the presentation in public because Allah explains where the limit is. And they shall not expose the adornments except to the following. And these are the men that form the ring of mahram. Except to her husband. Or to their fathers. Or their father-in-laws. Or to their sons. Or to their sons. Or their stepsons, because a woman can have a stepson, so your husband can have a son from a different marriage. Or to her brothers. Or to her nephew from a brother. Or her nephew from her sister's side. Or to the women folk around her. Or to her servants. And then sometimes in your household, you don't only have female servants, you have male servants like a drivers, cleaners, butlers. Subhanallah, Allah says, <laughs> So old men who have no desires anymore, very old men. Sometimes you have that type of servant at home, very old man that's been working there. Or children that are not aware of nakedness. See? So it means that when children are of age where they understand nakedness, you should not expose yourself to a child. SubhanAllah. Today, nudity poisons the minds of children. What happens when a movie is made, a cartoon or a regular movie, and it has mild nudity? Don't we rate it PG-13? What does PG-13 mean? What does that tell you? If you're not 13 years old, is that movie appropriate for you when a movie is PG-13? If you're not 13 years old, is that movie appropriate for you? The answer is no. Only rated G movies could be appropriate for anybody. Though. That's why they create this rating system. Why did we create rating system for movies? Because nudity has a detrimental effect. So imagine in the West they accept the fact that nudity is a bad thing, yet they criticize the woman for covering up herself. Hypocrisy. So Allah says, these are the kind of people you can <coughs> expose your zina to because they're your father, your husband, your, ch you know, your sons and stepsons, and your nephews, and your sisters, and the women folk. Those are the only people a woman should expose. It means that when you're at home, sisters, in your private quarters, you don't have to wear a hijab at home. That the hijab technically is when you step outside of your home. That's when it's for. So you can present yourself more respectably in public. The command did not stop there. Allah SWT said, وَلَا يَضْرِبْنَ بِأَرْجُلِهِنْ They should not stamp their feet لِيُعْلَمَ مَا يُخْفِينَ مِنْ زِينَتِهِنْ So when a woman has an anklet, she should not stamp her legs, you know, stamp her legs when she walks, her feet, to make noise with it. So people know, oh, she's wearing an anklet. Oh, she's wearing this type of uh, jewelry in her. Today, if a woman walks around with her high heels, you can hear a mile away walking like, oh man, that is probably like Lady Diana's shoes. You know, all sorts of shoes, you can now tell what kind of shoes based on the noise it makes. Allah says, don't do that. وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Allah says, all of us should make tawbah. Before this laws, people were not properly dressed. The intent of the law, you will find in Surah Al-Ahzab, Surah number 33, Ayah number 59. Ya ayyuhan nabi, Allah says, O messenger, O prophet, kulli azwajik wa banatik. Allah says, start with your wives. Subhanallah, you know, imagine Allah give a command to the Prophet and says, start with you first, your household. <laughs> Don't go out there and tell people this. You start with yourself. Kulli azwajik, say to your wives and your daughters, wa banatik, wa nisa'il mu'mineen, and the women of the believers, yudneena alayhin min jalabi bihim. Then Allah added a new part of the cover. First was the khima, something that covers from the head down to the bosom, and janabiya, something that cloaks the entire body to even conceal the shape of a woman. That's why Allah revealed this part of it. Why? So that women will be known to be chaste and righteous and they are not offended or annoyed by men. 
Allah, his sisters. The reason why these men feel they can attack women left, right, and center like ravenous dogs because they see women as meat. Women are taught to take off their clothes to be successful. Have you ever noticed in the checkout aisle of grocery stores, the magazine covers? What do you notice most about magazine covers? Half naked women. That's all you see. Women are taught that in corporate America, if you want to climb the ladder, uh, the, the ladder, not only should you dress down, but you should do something with the manager. Fox News, you already know the scandal. The media industry, Weinstein, you already know the scandal. That women are being told, unless you sleep with somebody, you can never get anywhere. Allah knows this is how people behave. That's why Allah revealed laws to protect women from not being seen as sexual objects. That's the intent of the law. Allah is not seeking just modesty. Allah want women to wear something that make them distinguished, to make them look respectable. And I'll tell you something, sisters, about hijab. This World Hijab Day is a nice idea, but it misses the point. It, the point of it was to see, to, for a non-Muslim to feel what a Muslim woman feels when they wear hijab. The hijab is not a fashion accessory like a hat. The hijab is a reflection of your inner iman. Because Allah says, Ya Bani Adam, Qad anzalna alaykum libasan yuwari sawatikum warisha wa libasu taqwa dhalika. The taqwa should be behind the hijab. There are many Muslim women wear the hijab. They're in nightclubs. As long as my head is covered, it's okay. There are many Muslim women wearing hijab. They have boyfriends, left, right, and center. They smoke or they drink. One drank and they say, Alhamdulillah, even in fact, after drinking it. SubhanAllah, somebody drinks alcohol, they end up saying, Alhamdulillah. Hijab is supposed to reflect your iman. That the outer cover, brothers and sisters, should be a reflection of your inner taqwa. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila umideen thumma amma ba'ad Dear respected brothers and sisters, the world is filled with ills and women still suffer oppression at many different levels. Women are not given opportunities in corporate America until they degrade themselves to somebody. <clears throat> until they degrade themselves and they call it freedom or if a Muslim wears hijab she's denied opportunities imagine this if a woman doesn't take off and and really make herself lonely she gets no opportunity if she dresses properly she gets no opportunity it's a double-edged sword you lose lose sisters it doesn't matter if you take off your hijab and then you sleep with somebody you not only lost your iman you lost your soul and you could lose your akhirah for this. For a few bucks. A few dollars you'll get in that promotion. Women are still suffering at the hands of men. It's the point I want to make. That's why Allah wanted men to be the ones to behave properly. To protect the women. Imagine this. The Prophet Sallallahu tells the companions this. The companions this. Iyakum wal julusa ala turaqat. Be careful sitting in the streets. Imagine he's telling companions, beware sitting in the streets. Then they said, Ya Rasulullah, we have no alternative but to sit in the streets when we converse with one another. So the Prophet ﷺ says, In Abitum, if you must do that, فَأَعْطُوا الطَّرِيقَ حَقَّ Then give the street its rights. The streets have rights. They asked, what are the rights of the streets? He said, غَبُّ basar." Lower the gaze when you sit in the streets. Men, brothers, it is you that should help protect the women. I'm talking to presidents, I'm talking to senators, I'm talking to congressional leaders, I'm talking to the media elite. All of you are men. It doesn't matter if you're Muslim or not. Basar, lower your gaze. And he says, Wakaful Ada. Do not harm people when you sit in the streets. Waraddu salam. Return the salam to people. When you sit in the streets, you must do these things. 
Put on your best behavior. Make sure people are safe. Respect others. SubhanAllah. This is the behavior, the conduct the Prophet Sallallahu wanted the men to have. And SubhanAllah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, none of us will escape zina. Hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, kutiba ala ibn Adam hawdhuhu min al-zina, adraka dhalika la mahala. He says that the son of Adam has been written for him a portion of zina that they cannot escape. Fazina al another. The zina of the eyes is looking at something. Rated R and beyond, it's looking at something. Rated X, obviously you know what that is. Stormy Daniels and all this stuff, nonsense. Fazina al lisan and nuk. The zina of the tongue is talking. Do you know that one nine hundred services make billions of dollars? Somebody dials a phone and somebody talks Zina to them, that makes billions of dollars. One nine hundred numbers. That's what they were reserved for. Fazina and Udune, the Zina of the ears, and Istima is to listen to something. So somebody talks, somebody listens. Fazina al Yadain, the Zina of the hands, and Bach is to touch, to grab. And I did not tell you grabbing from the from the Hollywood tapes. Fazina al rijlain and the zina of the legs al khuta is to take steps to it. He said, "When nafsu tamanna wa tashtari, the, the nafs desires things. It wants things, it desires things. So we go after this. We are naturally inclined to look, to say, to hear, to touch, to go." He said, "Wal farju yusaddiku dhalika aw yukadhibu. Your private parts will confirm or deny." That it is hard for us to escape zina. That's the point of that hadith. So Allah says, You must protect yourself actively away from zina by not looking, by not hearing, by not saying, by not touching, by not going. It will lead the human being to have the most righteous conduct. Imagine, sisters, if you are treated not because of what you wear, but the quality of your intellect the quality of your professionalism and the quality of your character, not by the measurements that somebody says you must have on your bust, on your waist, and anywhere else. Allah's law prevents women from becoming sexual objects and the deception of the West that freedom says you should take it off. SubhanAllah. Even women in Jannah wear hijab. And Allah never used the term hijab to describe what you should wear. He used khimar and jilbab. That is why if you search the Quran for hijab, you will not find clothes. Ulama later on formulated the term hijab to refer to what the covering does of the khimar and the jilbab. It's from the Quran, had no doubt about it. Surah Al-Nur, Surah al Surah al ahzab And Allah commanded the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to tell us this and for him to start with his own house so that people don't say, well, what about your wives? What about your daughters? Why are you telling us this? SubhanAllah. That's why, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا and we ask Allah to make them among them. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-Nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. كما صليت وسلمت وبارت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا برحمتك شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي بالحق ولا يقضى عليك اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وانصر الإسلام والمسلمين واغفر لجميع موتى المسلمين يا عزيز يا كريم ربنا لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا ضلا إلا هديته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا عاصيا إلا رحمته ولا عاسرا إلا يسرته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا قضيته 
انتهى يا رحم الراحمين ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم احفظ أزواجنا اللهم أعلم محفظ أزواجنا اللهم محفظ أزواجنا وبناتنا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وأنت خير الراحمين واغفر لنا وارحمنا وأنت خير الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء للقربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزلكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقيموا الصلاة